On January 27, 2025, NVIDIA, Broadcom and other companies experienced significant stock losses due to concerns about DeepSeek's free pricing model. DeepSeek is probably a term we're all familiar with. If not, I'll explain it here. DeepSeek is an open source LLM from China with less than 6 million euros in development. In this regard, the DeepSeek model R1 performs just as well as OpenAI's model R01. O1, written, which is probably a term everyone knows. DeepSeek only needed just 6 million euros for its development. AI development costs, while in America, it's said that the costs for better AI performance increase exponentially. With this, DeepSeek has shown that this is not necessary and has also released the whole thing as open source. Well, not entirely open. Source, because the training data is not freely available, while the model itself is freely accessible. And we will take a look at how we can use DeepSeek for free. For that, I'll now show you all the ways in which this is possible. This means we can run DeepSeek 100% locally on our device. I will also show that in this video, how to use it on the web, in an app, on your mobile device, or in a workflow, as I've already shown so far, through a workaround using Open Router. Currently, it unfortunately doesn't work natively, as the API is no longer available, or rather, there are no new API keys. I'll start by showing the simplest way to use DeepSeek on your own. And that's of course in the browser, just like you know it from ChatGPT. So, let's get started. So, we're now here in the browser on DeepSeek.com, and we can go ahead and jump right into DeepSeek. If you want to download the app directly, you can scan this QR code, download the DeepSeek app right away, and try it out completely, for free, on your mobile device. But now we want to just start this chat normally, that means we click on start now on the left side and that will open up a new chat. Now you can easily register. You can do this either with Google sign in, with your phone number if you have one that works, or just by using your email. And now you're in DeepSeek just like that. You can already see it strongly reminds you of ChatGPT. And now we can of course ask all sorts of questions here. That means let's just ask, explain to me the theorem of Pythagoras, Pythagoras, so we can now do that with the regular DeepSeek V3 LLM. This is the completely normal LLM, which doesn't, let's say, think first before it overwrites. And here we can see the solution, just like in ChatGPT. Gradually, the individual letters and words appear. And in the end, you can, of course, see the final result. Of course, we can also do this for more complex things. That means let's start a new chat and turn on DeepSeek R1. This is the new model that everyone is afraid of. And, well, we don't have a particularly complex task that we can give right now, but we can tell DeepSeek the same thing, for example. There won't be a significantly different result, but you can see right away that it says here, thinking, that means it really thinks first before it actually answers us. You can also have a look at that. It should probably appear here shortly. That's currently taking a while in practice, but it takes quite a while because the servers are very busy since this is available for free and there was also a particularly large cyber attack on DeepSeek. Accordingly, it always takes a little while. You have to wait a bit longer, but you can use it really well. And this is, as I said, still just pure thinking. You don't have any output yourself yet, and now the output actually comes in a sensible way. Out, as you know it from ChatGPT. And this is, as I said, nothing special for any of us. New, one advantage is that you can upload PDF files up to five Mumbai which is a huge benefit compared to the free version of ChatGPT. So you can try it out right away, and you can also use the search function. That means you can search directly on the internet with DeepSeek. If you want to learn more about these topics, please like this video and subscribe. But let's continue now. So we now also have the option, as we already know, to use DeepSeek with this AI agent from N8N, even if it doesn't work super well, the tools aren't being addressed right now, and you currently have to take this detour through Open Router because the DeepSeek API isn't available at the moment. That means I've done this once, and I can also show that it works even if it's unfortunately very slow. So it's 100% free, especially if you use N8N, or if you host NNN yourself, but the API itself is completely free. So we're going to ask a question now. Hello, how are you? A very simple question. We can see right away it's running through now. So, and we can see now DeepSeek has responded. It took a little while. It actually took almost 25 seconds, which isn't great right now, but at least it's free. 
And if you need tasks that might take a little longer to respond, you can use that really well in such a workflow. Currently, and we're going to rebuild this whole thing here. That means first we'll set up the chat and then connect the AI agent to it. We already know all of this from other AI agents, I would say. And here in the chat model, we're going to select open. That's a special feature. And we're creating new credentials with which we'll connect to open. That means we're going to open openrouter.ai. Click up here in the top right. Our symbol, then go to keys and create a new API key. We'll copy the API key, paste it in up here, and then enter it down below. Base URL, HTTPS, is colon slash slash openrouter.aiapi.v1 one. Then you can test it, and then he says two. Connection tested successfully. And then we select expression here under model. Let's copy the string here. We find it when we go over to model under prompt pricing on the left side and click on free. And then we find it here, the second result from the top. Or we just type in deep seek and then the model comes up directly. We're going to copy the string here. We then paste it here under model and then everything is already connected. It's important that this is of course open router. You can rename it of course by changing it to open router up top. Then you'll find it easier to locate again. Then we can of course add a memory and then we built it once and that's how it works right away. That's how it is and it's really simple. But now we're going to dive in and I'll show the whole thing on macOS. You can also easily apply the tutorial on, you can apply it the same way on Linux and Windows and it works just the same as long as you have at least a moderately strong graphics card. Here you can simply say the stronger the graphics card, the higher the video RAM, the better. On current Apple Silicon processors, it runs pretty well too. And I will show that here in this video. So now we're going to run DeepSeek locally on our device. For that, we're using Ulama. That means we're going to go to alama.com and download the software here, which is ultimately what runs these models. And we're going to download it here. Click on download at the top right. Then we choose what we want to download it for. We see that we have everything available for macOS, Linux, and Windows. We'll download it and run it. What's important on Mac is to double click it quickly, run it, and then install it. Then it will be, I mean, added to the path so that the programs are automatically available in the command line, that is, in the terminal. And now we can also just take a look for the model here. And then we find right at the top, because it's currently trending a lot, DeepCQR1, which is the reasoning model from DeepSec. And we also see that we have it with different parameters. We even have the original version with 671 trillion parameters. And we have a lot of distilled models here. Distilled means in this case, you take the functions from larger models, make it a bit more efficient, and can run it with significantly fewer parameters. This means that, for example, the 70 trillion parameter model did not work on my device. I just eventually canceled it because I didn't feel like waiting any longer. I'm currently using an M2 Max with 32 GB for this video. Of course, things can look completely different on Windows, especially with an 89, with a 3090T, or I don't even know if there is one, but with a 3090, for example, it should work very, very well. And the better the graphics card and the more VRAM is available, the better it ultimately runs. And then we'll jump right into the terminal and just use the models. And I'll show you how to download them. And then I'll also show you how we can display everything in the web interface. That means we're going to go into the terminal now. I'm using iTerm2 for that. And after we've installed that, we would just download a new model. And I'm just going to take this one, 7 billion parameter model. That means we're entering Ulama Run DeepSeek R17B. And we can see now it's basically downloading the models from the repository. And once that's done, we can move on. So everything has been downloaded now. We see that it's checking the checksum again to make sure that what it downloaded is really the right one. And we see we automatically jump into a terminal where we can directly ask questions. For example, hello, how are you? And then we see it responds right away, doesn't have to think too much about it. And now we can jump out with buy. And we've already downloaded the model. So is it available? 
in the list, we first see all the models that I'm going to show that we have in total, so the ones we've already downloaded. And when we click on PS, we can see like in Docker which models are currently running. And you can also see, for example, where they're running. Here you can see, for example, 100% GPU. The Traitu, the 32 model, for example, runs on 50 for me. Ah, uh, no, wait. The 32 model is also running at 100% GPU on my machine, but the 70 model is running at 50%. GPU, 50%, CPU. And you can definitely tell that it's much slower when it's not using those Apple Silicon processors neural how unit. So you can definitely tell that the performance goes down. And we're going to do the whole thing now, just like with ChatGPT in the browser interface. It has a huge advantage. It looks way cooler and you just know it much, much better. And it also works easier for the operation. For that, we're using open web UI. That means we're now going to search for open web UI. This is this one here. You can also open it directly here and take a look for yourself. But let's go to the GitHub repository. And uh, what's also important is that you install Docker. So I can quickly show you here. That means you're going to search for Docker, then just get Docker. And then you can download Docker Desktop for Mac, for Windows, and for Linux. Just install it, and if necessary, enable the system extension. And then you have the option to run containers with different contents. And in this case, we're also using Docker for Open Web UI. Let's scroll down here. We need to check that Docker is running. I can see that directly in the taskbar. And we can already see here automatically down installation with default configuration. If Olama is on your computer, use this command. When we run this command in item 2 or in the terminal or on Windows in PowerShell, etc., run it. Then it downloads the Docker image and starts it on port 3000. So the web interface will be available there. It's also important that this is included here, that the storage is linked correctly. But basically, you just have to copy this once, go to item 2 and paste it. Basically, just press enter. I can go ahead and press enter now. There will probably be an error because it's already running. But I can also check that by typing in Docker PS. Then we can also see that it's already running on port 3000 and also not bound to a specific IP address. And we have Olama 2 running. Now we have the 7 bytes. The 7 billion parameters are running. That means we're going to go to localhost 3000 now. And then we can see right away that the open web UI opens up here. You can create an account the first time you start it and log in directly. And I'm just going to log in here. I'll save the password now. Now we can even do direct web prompting here like you might know from ChatGPT. Sometimes you know. That means we select the model we want to test up here in the top left. We will now simply take the 14 billion parameters. And once the seven, and we can also use the 1.5 billion parameters for testing. And then we can just start writing and explain the Pythagorean theorem to me and press enter. And now we see that the three models are all running side by side. That obviously means that the performance is significantly worse when three models are queried at the same time. So if I were to ask just one model, it would obviously be much faster than if I asked three models at the same time. Why am I doing this? I just want to show how the differences between the individual models are. And accordingly, we're just going to wait for the three prompts to finish. And now we can see here, for example, that the model with 7 billion parameters has already finished, while the 1.5 billion one hasn't really started yet. And the 14B writes nicely, but you can also see that one is writing in English and the other in German. The one with the most parameters in this test is currently writing in German, but I can also just show it with one very simply. But what I've noticed is in the test, when I say, for example, explain it to me in one sentence, then the model with fewer parameters just couldn't manage it. So we're just going to do another new test. That means we're writing explain to me the Pythagorean theorem in one sentence. 
And we're just hoping that the parameter model with 7 billion does this properly. What I also noticed in the test is that you often, you have to tell ChatGPT to translate the entire text or edit the whole text. And you have to keep asking again and again. With DeepSig, I've noticed that he listens to us. He does exactly what he's told. If he needs to translate the entire text, he does that. While with ChatGPT, you have to keep asking and say, please translate the whole text. Point, not just individual sentences or individual chapters. DeepSig sticks to it and at least does it properly. And now we see the response from DeepSeek. It managed to respond in one sentence. I didn't expect that, but it worked. And yes, a small problem is that sometimes you respond in English and sometimes in German. I can't say exactly what it's due to. With more parameters, it definitely works better. You should definitely check what kind of hardware you have. If you support this, feel free to take a model with more parameters. Just give it a try. The entire model has to fit into the video RAM of your graphics card or your graphics processor in a laptop. It definitely works. With the 1.5 billion parameters on your computer. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, uh, feel free to leave a like. And I'll see you in the next video. And feel free to write in the comments what questions you have and what you would like me to explain next.